How's it going everyone? I'm Laser, and as you probably saw from the intro video, today we'll be reviewing the Razer Huntsman Mini keyboard. The time has come to finally replace my 7 year old keyboard with a new one and I decided to go for something, something smaller, something more compact to better fit my somewhat limited desk space. So if you're interested, if this keyboard is for you, if you want to know if this keyboard is for you and it will suit your needs, stay tuned for the rest of the review. Even though the title has big in it, the keyboard is anything but. It measures 293mm by 103mm and has almost 37mm height. The weight of the keyboard is just over 453 grams. It's a standard 60% size, something that has become quite popular especially among mechanical keyboard enthusiasts and gamers, as the compact size allows you to arrange your desk more freely and have more space for your mouse. It's also very easy to transport and I have to say I was really surprised by how small the keyboard is. The 60% tag doesn't tell you much until you actually have the keyboard in front of you and when compared to a full-size keyboard it feels tiny. Definitely not for everyone, but I really like the compact size. On top there is no visible Razer logo as there actually is no space for it, but under the spacebar at the side of the keyboard you will see a very muted Razer logo. Really clean and well looking design, I really like it. The bottom is fully covered in Razer typography and glossy finish, barely visible overall unless you put some side light into it. Since it's at the back of the keyboard you will never look at it, but it's a nice aesthetic touch. The Huntsman comes in two flavors, black and white or how Razer likes to call it Mercury, it has brushed aluminum top plate and the rest is made of high quality plastic. The keyboard overall feels very solid. You can also choose from two different key switches, clicky purple and linear red. Previously I was using the clicky switches on Razer Black Widow, but after switching to Razer's reds I know there's no going back. I'll tell you why in just a moment. The keycaps are double shot PBT, which suggests high durability and wear resistance. The font is clean and nice, although when using the RGB lighting, you can notice on some keycaps that the backlight is uneven. Nothing deal breaking as you won't be looking at the keyboard while playing or using it, but I guess there's room for improvement in the future iterations. Good news is that you can freely change the keycaps as they use the same mounting system as the Cherry MX keycaps, so if you want to add some individual flair to your keyboard you're welcome to do so. Razer even offers different colored keycaps for the Huntsman on their website. On the back of the keyboard there's a USB-C connector and even though Razer uses their own USB-C cable there's plenty enough space to use anything you like so if you want to make your keyboard a bit more unique you can choose from a variety of different USB-C connectors and add some more individual flair to your own setup. On the bottom you will find two pairs of feet allowing you to set the keyboard at two different angles. When placed on the feet however the keyboard becomes more prone to movement so there is a chance it will slide while you're in a tight situation and you're mashing your keyboard trying to stay alive. When laying flat four rubber feet will glue the keyboard to your desk making it harder to move around. As with most of gamer focused products right now we do have RGB lighting but it's nothing over the top, the lighting is rather subtle with minimal light spilled under the caps which helps the keyboard achieve more subtle and toned down look, fitting the rest of the build. You have a couple of built-in lighting scenarios which you can toggle through or you can use Razer's own software, Synapse, to set the lighting patterns to your liking. Now let's talk about something that's probably the most important factor when choosing the right keyboard for you, so the user experience. Like I said before, I'm coming from a Razer Black Widow which had a really clicky, really tactile switches. They were quite loud but also quite responsive and you knew exactly when you pressed the button. And the switches here are very quiet, uh, linear and there is no pronounced actuation point and the good thing about this keyboard and also for some it might be a downside is that the actuation happens at just one millimeter travel time so the keyboard is very responsive uh, it's very snappy and as soon as you just tap the button uh, you see the result on the screen. It can be a good thing because it can give you some competitive advantage while playing shooters for example especially shooters on or MMORPGs something where you need a very quick response time but it also can be a bad thing because it, for me, it sometimes led to accidentally pressing buttons I didn't want to. For example, when typing or when playing games. Happened to me a couple of times that I just barely brushed the space bar and my character jumped, from it, which sometimes can, you know, <laughs> ruin the whole action or when you're aiming downside or, or, or doing whatever that requires a bit of focus. Uh, I guess it's a matter of getting used to. It's nothing deal breaking, uh, you just have to be wary that the keyboard is very responsive and whenever you just delicately tap the, the button it will respond very quickly and sometimes may lead to unintended 
uh, input. Another thing you will need to get used to if you haven't used 60% keyboard before is the lack of numpad, dedicated arrow keys and function keys. They are here, but you need to press the function button to activate them. The good thing is that Razer decided to print the alternative function of the keys on the side, which allows you to quickly identify the function you're looking for. Also when you press the FN button, only the switches that have additional functions assigned will light up, helping you quickly find the one you're looking for. I'm using the Huntsman with red switches from Razer, which are similar to Cherry Reds, since the release of Huntsman Tournament Edition, which is a take year or 10 kilos version of this keyboard, Razer made some improvements with the reds. Listening to the feedback of the community and the switches sound much better now. You can hear for yourself. All right, time to sum things up. Is this keyboard for everyone? Well, definitely not. If you are looking for a keyboard that will help you with your productivity, then the lack of arrow keys and the num keys will be distracting and will not help you with your productive work, definitely not. Also, if you're coming from a mechanical keyboard enthusiast community, I think there are better choices for you out there, which allow you to, for example, change out the key switches to match your preferred style. If, however, gaming is what you're looking for, the Razer Huntsman is a very good choice. It offers a very quick response, the switches react very quickly, they're very quiet so you won't be irritating anyone else in the house, they won't have to listen to your very clicky keyboard. And of course, arguably the most important factor is the small size of this keyboard. The 60% keyboard, whether it's Razer Huntsman or anything else, will allow you to more freely arrange your desk and have more space to maneuver with your mouse. As for me, I really like the size of the Huntsman Mini. It fits on my desk really nicely and like I said, coming from a full-size keyboard to, to this this small keyboard is really something, something new for me. Uh, and I really like the quiet red switches from Razer. Keyboard is not without its faults, for example, the spacebar is a little bit wobbly. When you shake it, you can hear the keyboard rattle. But overall, for an average user, for someone who mostly plays games and needs a very compact and at the same time very responsive keyboard, like myself, then definitely Razer Huntsman is a good choice for you. When it comes to price, it starts at around $120, which is a pretty big price tag. And I probably wouldn't recommend getting one on its full price because, well, to be honest, it's quite expensive. However, if you're, if you're able to get it on some kind of discount like I did, I actually got it at around 20% discount, it's a very good choice and I would definitely recommend getting one. I would definitely get it again because I'm really satisfied with the, uh, with the way it works, with the way it feels and with the way it plays. And for me, the most important factor is that, that it allows me to free up a lot of space on my desk. All right, that sums up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I'm Laser. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.